G'day, so I've got a bit of a machining project video for today. There's a car meet on this weekend, and there's going to be some like RC drifting and stuff there. So I pulled out my RC drift stuff, which has been sitting in a box. It's all over the floor over here. It's been sitting in a box for a long time. And um, hopefully I can save some of the batteries. One's come good so far. But I need to make a gear for my car, because it's currently stripped. So the car's a Team Magic E4D. It's got a K Factory counter steer kit on it. So what this does is this is the drive sh or the drive belt to the front wheels. It actually drives the back wheels faster than the front ones. What it means is if you see four-wheel drive drift cars, they always have zero lock and it doesn't look very cool. And it's not as fun. So this means you have to have constant counter steer on. So it's kind of like a rear wheel drive car, but you can also it handles a bit easier like a four-wheel drive car. But this top gear here, you can see the teeth. If this is in focus, the teeth at the top there are stripped. And I can buy parts for this car, but because this is an aftermarket bit, I can't buy just the gear for it without buying the whole kit. So what I'm going to try and do is make the gear from scratch. Okay, so I've got the counter steer kit removed now. This is the gear I need to make. I didn't realize I had three little holes in it as well, which are to help retain the bearing. I think I'm just going to make the bearing a press fit to make the machining a bit easier. But the first thing I'll do is start measuring it up. I'll have to take a bit of a guess as to the gear tooth profile. But I'll do a little drawing that I've got to follow and then work from there. So there's my quick and nasty drawing. It's just giving me the outside diameters and how deep I have to cut the teeth. The old gear is here. This is the one that it runs against, so I use this as a reference for how deep the teeth need to be. Obviously it's pretty hard to measure stuff this small, but it looks like the teeth are cut 1.25 millimeters deep, and it should be 20 millimeter outside gear, so... Alright, so I've been having to think about how I'm going to do this and enjoying a zooper duper whilst I think. This is a boring bar for the lathe. It's made for, like, cutting into, like, inside tubes. What I'm going to do is knock the center out of it, and I'm going to grind one of these bits of steel into a like profiled tooth cutter, mount it in here, and then I should be able to mount this in the mill so it spills, spins like a drill bit, and then I'll be able to like they'll have the tool stuck at the, sticking out the side of it, which is kind of hard to explain, but you'll see in a second once I stick it in the mill. But the first step is grinding this into a gear tooth cutter. So normally I'd like to have a microscope, or not a microscope, at least a big magnifying glass to do this under. But basically all I've got to do is grind the end of this tool to match the points of this gear. So it's just gonna be a matter of matter of grinding it under here and then comparing it back to the gear until it's a point that fits. Okay, so this is the gear I'm trying to copy. Here's the tool I've ground. See it's pretty close fit. That's about as close as I'm gonna get it. This is like a this is pretty zoomed in. But hopefully I've got the angle of it right. So now that that's good, I'm gonna start machining up the blank. Okay, so I wasn't happy with that, and after a lot of stuffing around, this is my final fitment of the gear tooth cutter. So, I'd say that's pretty close. You can see the teeth, they're not actually, if I point with the, uh, if I point with the cutter, the teeth aren't a flat edge, there's like a thinner bit and they get narrower at the top. So I've tried to copy that, but like these teeth about a millimeter, are about a millimeter tall, so I'm working in like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a millimeter, with a grinding stone by hand. So I think this is as close as it's going to get, but it looks pretty good to me. Like, there's my finger for scale. Okay, so that should be my gear cutting tool ready to go. Now this is the piece of plastic I'm going to use. I've got to turn this down a little bit to 20 mil because that's my, that's my outside gear diameter. Now in my last video, you saw my new lathe, which is what you think I would use, but unfortunately, the new lathe needs a bit of, like, I'm giving it a bit of work before I use it, like, doing an oil change. For those of you who don't know, like, a lathe, it's not like a car, but, like, it does have, like, these are sight glasses where there's areas full of oil. Inside here and here is oil pumps, and there's an oil filter in the top. It takes, like, a lot of oil, so there's the big industrial drum of oil, slowly draining the old stuff out of it, but this is going to be out of action for, I don't know, a week or so while I do all the servicing, so... Back over to the little lathe. Now unfortunately, small lathe strikes again. What you'd normally want to do with a piece this long is slide it all the way down into the chuck. So I've just got this much sticking out. But unfortunately, because it's such a small lathe, it doesn't fit. And if I just try and put it in like this, and then machine the end of it here, it's just going to like wobble all over the place. So my two options are either put in a bearing in this end, which is called the live center, but I don't have a live center. So the next option I have is called a steady. This is the steady I'll move you down a bit so you can see what I'm talking about the steady has like some little adjustable guides I don't know how this is going to go on plastic because normally you want the guides to be softer than the thing you're machining but in this case the guides are brass but what we can do now is flip this open 
put our piece of plastic in here and then adjust the guides up to it and it'll help hold it for us. As far as a bit of plastic goes, it's got a hole in one end already and the hole's smaller than the one I have to drill so I may as well use the end that's already got the hole put in it. There you go. So our piece of plastic is supported at the end now. I have to go get the extension cord and then we'll try and start machining it and see how much it vibrates. Alright, so it seems like it's pretty stable now. I've only got to take 0.3 of a millimetre off it. And then we're ready to go. Might actually power feed that instead, it's a bit smoother. This lathe is currently just balancing on a pallet trolley, which is why the whole thing wobbles. But this isn't like a super high precision section of it. So it'll be fine as is. There you go, 20.06. So we'll roll with that, I think. See how we go. All right, so I've moved from the lathe to the mill. Basically, this is kind of like a big drill press and the drill goes here, but I can move it around to cut sideways and stuff. So normally you put things in the vise, I've slid the vise along and I've bolted down this, which is the dividing head. So when I turn that, you can see it rotates this. So basically what we're going to do is get our gear blank, we put in here, which is going to sit there, and then come in and cut it, and then rotate it, cut it, rotate it. Thankfully, um, there's 36 teeth on the gear, which makes the maths easy because it's just 10 degrees per teeth. Uh, per tooth. Anyone that's a machinist watching this is probably asking why I'm not using whole plates and it's because I don't have any whole plates. So I'm just using the degrees on here and I've got minutes marked on this one. For those of you that don't know, because a lot of people don't seem to know, minutes is like there's 60 minutes in a degree and there's 360 degrees in like a full circle. But minutes is like a finer degree measurement. So 10 degrees per tooth. So keep setting that up. We'll put the tool we made in here and then measure everything, make sure we're right and then start cutting. So basically our boring bar tool from before, I've knocked the middle out of it. What we're going to do is I'll take the end of this out. This is a collet chuck, which unlike a normal drill chuck opens and closes like all the way. This one you have these little collets that you change and each one only holds like, this one's only for stuff 9 to 10 millimeters. So I've got to go find one that's the right size for this. So there's a few things that aren't ideal in this setup. This is way too long, so this is going to be a bit flexy. And this sticks out a bit because it's going to be too flexy. This has to stick out because this tool's so long, but this is like a tool I use in the lathe, so I don't really want to cut it shorter. And this is obviously a boring bar for a lathe, not a milling bit, so it sticks out as well. But everything should be workable. This should be interesting to say the least. So the first thing I need to do is get these matched up, but the camera is on top of the, uh, the tripod sitting on top of my controls, so. I'm going to put you over here for a minute. So you're a bit far away here, but basically what I need to do is make sure my cutter is in the middle. And this is a trick that I've seen, or never tried. I wind the tool up until this ruler touches, and it holds the ruler clamped in. And then when I move up and down, it just falls out. That doesn't work. All right. I'm determined to get this to work. So I roll it in until the ruler is pinched on there. And then when I move the table up and down, oh, it does sort of work. The angle of the ruler changes and the ruler is like magnified over the top of it. So all I do is, actually where's a square? I'll put a square in here, probably from this side. And then I move the table up and down until the angle of the ruler matches the edge of the square. Looks like about there. And so that should mean that my tool is now bang on. I'll make it a little bit more the other way. It should mean my tool is now exactly in the middle of the round, like the center of the circle where we're cutting the gears. I don't know if my head's getting in the way. But we'll call that centered, I think. I reckon there's a chance we're going to get away with that. I don't know if you can see with my fat head in the way, but we'll start it up. And if this touches, then we're going to have to cut it shorter. Oh, I could stick it out. No, no it's going to have to be cut shorter. Anyway.
So what I'm going to do now is move the whole table this way, 1.25 millimeters, which was the depth of our teeth. So if this was steel, I'd probably do this in a couple of passes, but because it's only plastic, we should be right. There we go, first cut. Right, well, something there is completely wrong because the tooth looks huge. Why does it look so big? I did move 1.2 mil, didn't I? Right, this is the practice piece. So I was worried for a minute there that I might have messed something up because the gaps look too big. But I think the actual cutting geometry on this tool is not really good, so it's making a bit of a big, like, soft burr. So the teeth look a lot bigger than they are, but they do actually, like, match up with the original gear. So I'll keep going all the way around. Oh, the gear's going in the... it's gone now. Um, I'll keep going all the way around, and we'll see what it looks like at the end. Hopefully it's close. House backwards again. Cool, hopefully that is right. Because there was that one in the middle where I screwed up, like the very first cut was a bit too deep. There's gonna be one weird tooth in it, but to be honest, I'm not expecting this to fit first try, because this, as accurate as I could eye it to grind it, it's not gonna be bang on. So we'll put this in the lathe, clean the burrs off it, and then line it up with the gear. And if we're, I'm sure I'll have to work out, once I see how it meshes, it has to go a bit closer, a bit further. Normally in a gear system, you want some adjustment between the gears, but the way the RC car is designed, the gears have to be bang on. So this might take one or two attempts to get right, but we'll take it out of here and put on the car. We'll put it on the lathe, clean it up, and then see how it looks. All right, so I've given this a bit of a clean up. You can see the teeth are a bit like sort of sawtoothed. Like they go, they're a bit angled one way, which is, that's to do with how I've ground the tool. It's just so hard to grind a tool this small. Now that I've seen how the teeth look, I can actually tell looking at the tool that it is a little bit shark toothed. So maybe it needs some adjustment, but as far as the original gear, it seems like it all meshes together fairly well. And theoretically, the shark tooth is actually stronger going one way than the other. I might just put the bearing in it, put it in the car and just see how it runs. There is that bit somewhere here where I took that first cut too deep. So there's sort of like half a tooth in there instead of a full one. But before I go any further, I will put the little machine the inside of it, put the little bearing in it, make sure it actually fits diameter wires before I bother stuffing around with the tool and doing anything else. Right, so there's the gear. I just cut it off with the pack saw because my parting off blade is set up for the big machine. I should be able to press this bearing into it. The other one, like the original one, had three little screws to hold the bearing in, but I just made it like a press fit, and to be honest, I don't know why the original one wasn't like the, I don't know why the original one wasn't just like that, because it's definitely the easiest way to do it. But we'll bolt it together and see if the teeth match up, and then depending on how well they match up, actually. If they match up well, I'll make another one the same without that little retarded tooth in it. And if they don't match up, I'll... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll do something. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. You see it on the camera? Looks like I got the guess for the tooth depth pretty bang on. There's a little tight spot just there. I might just check if there's a bit of swarf stuck in that tooth, because I can feel it's... There's like a notch there. Other than that... That looks pretty nice. Oh, can I even be bothered to make a second gear? Tempted to just run it with this one and see if how it survives. So the thing with this setup is to adjust the mount to the to adjust where this meshes to the car, this slides up and down. To adjust, there's another gear that goes like another gear that goes here, and this slides up and down, but there's no adjustment this way, so that's why this one had to be bang on. But that looks pretty good. Might chuck it in the car, we'll give it its first test drive.
which is pretty exciting. Actually, I don't have any drift tires. Wait, I have some drift tires. Anyway, we'll make it work. Let's throw it in the car, see what happens. Cool. Hopefully that works. All right, there's a quick close-up of it mounted on the car. Looks like it works. I'm gonna swap the drift tires back onto it and then give it a test drive. Cool. Well, I found some wheels. Pretty sure it's gonna handle like a bucket because the front one's a super Campbell one. But fun fact, this green work Meister looking thing with the Team Magic sticker was what I had on this car when I first got it. And it was my most liked Instagram post for like five years. But regardless, we'll see if this gear decides to exploit itself within 10 seconds. Oh, that's right, I forgot the steering servo and this has had it as well. Sick, it works. I wonder how long it's actually going to last. So this one here is a bit stripped but I have a spare, but we'll swap that and then I guess it's ready for the car meet. Right, so I'm just heading out to the meet, we've got all the cars in the back seat, waiting for Sean to turn up because he's supposed to be following us on his bike and we're ready to give the car a proper test run. We made it like 100 metres and Sean's bike's already broken. <laughs> 